Some so-called knowledge is more terrible than ignorance. Today, our education from primary and secondary schools to universities is more about teaching knowledge, skills and professions that only culture is missing. We have cultivated a lot of refined egotists, many highly educated barbarians who are so cold. There is a very famous saying, knowledge is power. The Chinese are familiar with it and agree with it. Historically, after 1840, China was vulnerable to Western science and technology, so our conclusion was then reached. If you fall behind, you will be beaten. This backwardness means the backwardness of science and technology. From the reality, if we can't answer a standardised test paper well with knowledge today, we may not be able to enter a good university, choose a good major and get a good job so as to better meet our material desires. Whether from historical experience or realistic pressure, we all know that knowledge is too important. But what I am going to tell you today is that although knowledge is really important, knowledge has limitations. 1. This carrot has tied him up all his life. First of all, knowledge is infinite. What does it mean to have knowledge? Knowledge is the cognition of all the facts in the world. Since the world is infinite, knowledge also infinite, but the tragedy is that life is limited. Chuang Tzu has said, life is limited, while knowledge is infinite, and it is possible to pursue the infinite knowledge with a limited life. The world is infinite, our life is limited, and if we pursue the infinite knowledge contained in the infinite world with a limited life, our life will be exhausted. When knowledge is not systematic, it is useless, just fragments. For example, a newspaper once held a competition on synology knowledge and asked a group of experts to work out a set of synology topics. When the title is finished, the editor wanted me to review it. I watched it for five minutes and judged it as three words, uninteresting, boring and useless. For example, there is a question, in which era in Chinese history were eunuchs allowed to take wives. This kind of knowledge is very serious. If you specialize in the study of eunuchs and make out their living conditions, psychological state and their status, influence and role in Chinese history, you will become a great expert. But if your main focus is not on this, such a fragment of knowledge like this is not useful to you at all. Another question is, when did the carrots come into China? If you can turn it into systematic knowledge for analysis and research, it is meaningful. However, if a person does not have such intention and goal, and he only knows when the carrots were introduced to China, such knowledge is not only useless to him, but also may have a negative influence. Because he knew that most people didn't know the answer, he felt a burst of joy. He felt that he was the best person in the world, and he especially wanted others to know this. So he waited for others to ask questions every day in order to gain others' admiration. In order to wait for this day, he probably ordered carrots every time he has dinner with his friends, and while others eat well, but he only waits for one question. This carrot has tied him up all his life. Section 2. The total knowledge you have exceeds Confucius. The German philosopher Neitzer wrote an article called Why Am I So Smart? His conclusion is just one sentence. The reason why I am so smart is that I never waste energy on unnecessary things. Once I took a taxi and the driver was listening to a knowledge contest. In the program, 
the host plays five music clips, each of which takes a few seconds, and then asked, These five music clips, two of them belong to the same song. Who do you know? A young man answered first and said he knew it, answered correctly. The second question immediately followed was, two of them are from the same music album, do you know? At that time I got nervous, I was afraid he would know the answer. If he didn't know, it meant he was still normal, and if he knew it, he might be ruined for life. But I didn't expect him to really know. Then I asked the driver to turn off the radio. The driver was startled and asked why. I said, it's insulting our intelligence and is misleading the flow of our lives. This is called useless knowledge. There are too many such useless knowledge in life. For example, many people care about what colour a star likes, what constellation is, how many times they get married and how many times they get divorced. When a person spends his energy on these points, he may acquire knowledge and be able to chat with people at the dinner table, but he will become particularly trivial. It is impossible for our life to possess unlimited knowledge. What is more sad is that boring knowledge will make life become boring. Trivial knowledge will make personality trivial or even obscene. Zi Xia, a student of Confucius, said a long time ago, Although it is a small skill, it is of great value and considerable. But for the lofty career, it will not work, so the gentleman does not engage in these small skills. Even when carrots were brought into China, you can boast, but if you always focus your cognition on this information, you will not certainly achieve anything in your life. You use trivial knowledge to turn life into fragments, so a gentleman doesn't do it. Zan Si once proposed the identification of knowledge. He said that some knowledge is boring, useless and uninteresting. For such knowledge, Sun Tzu said a judgment that you know such knowledge, you may not become a gentleman. You do not know this knowledge, you will not therefore become a villain. There is knowledge that adds nothing to your life, so why do you spend your energy and time on it? But in life, there are, are indeed many people who concentrate on it with great joy and interest to cut their own life into pieces with trivial knowledge. In fact, there is something more important than knowledge. There is an essay in the book of Leidse called Two Little Children Arguing About the Sun, which all of us here have read. Two children debated whether the sun was nearer to us in the morning or at noon. Both of them have their own arguments, saying that the morning is nearer because the sun is bigger in the morning than in the noon. And the noon is nearer because the sun is hotter in the noon than in the morning. Confucius lived under great pressure. He was almost the Google and Baidu at that time, and everyone went to ask him any questions. The two children asked Confucius about it, but Confucius could not judge it. So the author mocked Confucius in the child's tone. Who says you have more knowledge? The author probably thought that as long as he denied Confucius has more knowledge, he denied the value of Confucius. The idea is clearly wrong. In the examination room of life knowledge, who can stand to the end? I'll bet it with you today that I can give a 100 point set of knowledge questions, each with a standard answer, but I can give everyone here zero points. In turn, you can also give me 100 points of knowledge questions so that I can't get a point. For example, independent enrolment of Fordan University once issued a question. 
the teacher asked the students, If you ask me a question now, you must meet two conditions. The first is that I can't answer it, and the second is that you must have a standard answer. Many people say this topic is too shocking, but I just think it comes out very well, because it tells us that in the exam room of knowledge, no one can stand at the end. A clever student immediately asked, Sir, can you tell my grandfather's name? I could also follow this idea to give you questions. It doesn't take much effort to make you get zero points. Can you tell my grandfather's name? Can you tell my grandmother's name? Can you tell the name of my grandfather's second uncle? Whoever here can answer it, I will pay for dinner tonight. It is obvious that knowledge can bring down anyone. If you want to count the total amount of knowledge, I believe that all of you here today have more total knowledge than Confucius. For example, I can give questions on computers, physics, English, mathematics, and so on, and Confucius will not definitely be able to reply to these questions as you. But are we even at a higher level than Confucius? We have to think about another question. It is not the total amount of knowledge that determines Confucius's realm, but something else. Confucius himself said long ago, Do I have knowledge? No, I have not. Socrates also once said, What I know more than others is that I know I am ignorant. They are not modest in saying this, they are simply telling a truth. Facing the infinite world, the knowledge in our short life can be negligible. Therefore, we should allow our own ignorance and should also tolerate the ignorance of others. You don't like me and give me a mathematical problem. I study the maths every day in order to prepare for someone to give me similar questions next time. After 10 years of study, the Cultural Forum of Liberation Daily has probably issued 6,800. I finally have the courage to speak on stage, and suddenly someone said, Mr. Baal, I have a set of physics problems. You wouldn't do that, would you? Because you will tolerate my ignorance, and we will also tolerate the ignorance of others. But there is a situation that cannot be tolerated. What is that? No conscience. Number three, no knowledge can be tolerated. No conscience cannot be tolerated. No knowledge can be tolerated. No conscience cannot be tolerated. When we encounter standardized test papers, there are no questions if we can't answer well. But it relates to the judgment of conscience, right or wrong, good or evil, beauty or ugliness. If something goes wrong, that is a big problem. I will tell you a story. One father found that his 15-year-old daughter was not at home, leaving a letter saying, Dear Mum and Dad, I eloped with Randy today. Randy is a very characterful man with all kinds of tattoos and is only 42 years old. Not old, is he? I'll be living with him in the forest. Of course. He is... Not just he and I. Randy has a few other women, but I don't mind it. We will grow marijuana, and besides smoking it ourselves, we can also sell it to our friends. I also hope that we will have lots of children in that place. During this period, I also hope that medical technology will make great progress so that Randy's AIDS can be cured. The father had broken down as you read this. However, he found another sentence at the bottom. Before the end, see the back. On the back, it says, Dad, none of what that page says is true. The truth is that I am at my classmate's home next door. The midterm exam paper is in the drawer, and you open it and sign it. 
The reason I write this letter is to tell you that there is worse thing in the world than not answering the test paper well. You call me now and tell me that I can go home safely. This letter shows that one can make a mistake on a test paper of knowledge, even more than once, and even make mistakes for a lifetime, and we may be ignorant until we are old. But in matters of conscience, it is possible to make one mistake and we will be doomed. Therefore, value judgment is more important than fact judgment. We cannot know everything about factual judgments, but we should try to behave with a conscience and have value judgments which should be done as much as possible. One of the problems in Chinese society today is the lack of judgment. One problem of Chinese education is the lack of cultural literacy. For example, in order to boycott Japanese goods, many young people go to the streets to smash their patriots' cars and even hurt their patriots' bodies. They think they are patriotic, but in fact they are obstructing the country. Why does a person with good patriotic enthusiasm do something that hinders the country and damage the image of Chinese people? What is they lack of? Conscience. Knowledge is power, but I would like to tell you that conscience is the way to go. We often say that backwardness invites beating, but I would also like to tell you that barbarianism also invites beating.